So how was that cameo yesterday, huh? Pretty cameo-rific, wasn't it? Many of you even attested to your heads exploding. Now please know that I cannot be held responsible for any of the legal ramifications involved in causing mass cranial conflagration. Plus, most of you seem to retain your typing skills post-head detonation, which leads me to believe that either A, my audience has amazing post-mortem reflexes, or B, in fact, none of their heads exploded. So I did some research, and after four hours of diligent studying, I discovered that when someone says that their head exploded, they're actually hyperbolically stating that they were really blown away, that something knocked them off of their feet. And so I apologize that I blew many of you away from your computers. I hope the walk home is not too far and not too treacherous. Of course, if you did get blown away, then how did you type that you got blown away? One moment. Okay, so apparently when people say they were blown away, it actually means that they witnessed something that just made their jaws drop. And so I'm awfully sorry for relieving many of your skulls of their mandibles, but next time would you just type that instead of using idioms? It really makes my blood boil. Ow! My blood! Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's July 18, the 199th day of 2011, which means that 56 years ago today, the first Disneyland theme park opened in Anaheim, California. Ah yes, Disneyland, where imagination becomes reality, the impossible becomes possible, and your financial well-being becomes a thing of the past. Ah, I see you picked out a gigantic stuffed Donald Duck from the Shut Your Kids Up section of our store. Nice choice. Now will that be cash, charge, or a fraction of your soul? Disneyland, our profit margin is equal to your yearly wages. And when you're not hemorrhaging money, you're standing, waiting in line for a ride between two morbidly obese families of five, trying to control your kid whose level of excitement is so great that his location can only be accurately expressed as something similar to an electron cloud. Namely, wherever you guess him to be, he isn't there. After waiting for a fibula-numbing hour and a half, you get onto the poorly constructed ride, move really quickly for about ten minutes while people scream, cry, or possibly barf around you, and then you get offered a picture taken of you on said ride for a nominal fee. Meanwhile, your kid whose gratification on aforementioned ride served only to excite him to an even greater degree is squawking a litany of let's go again, let's go again. The meals are your chance to relax, to unwind and so you go to one of the cumbersomely themed restaurants in the park where you once again wait. The parents of the families here look much the way you do, tired, relieved, faces vaguely stricken with the look one would affect after taking a ride in a tornado. Take a seat, receive a menu, and think briefly to yourself that if you just glare at the egregious prices, maybe they'll drop ten dollars or so. And everything's a la carte because that's the way it's done here. You eat, pay, and can't help but tip well, because like it or not, the aspartame sweetness and clown-like smiles of the Disneyland workers have finally gotten to you. And then you retreat to your hotel, fatigued, sunburned, and drained of spirit and about 10% of your monetary value. You take a shower, but you find yourself actively hating the fact that the soap has been carved into the iconic shape of a certain cartoon character's head. And all you want to do is sleep dreamlessly. But no, you have nightmares. Nightmares that do not stop upon waking. Because when you wake up and greet the morning, you'll have to do it all over again. So, what do I think of Disney theme parks? Well, they're pretty fun, actually. Until tomorrow, he's Griff, and he's still talking.